know Him personally. Yes. Hallelujah. To have a personal relationship yes. with Him. You know, I was thinking, and this is not our sermon today, but I was thinking about what I mentioned earlier, how Jesus, before He entered into Jerusalem, mm. out there on the hillside, was mm. talking about how oft He would have gathered them under His wing right. as a mother hen does her chicks, you know, and protects her. But, mm. but she would not. That wouldn't be the last time that He would pray for them on the hillside outside of mm. Jerusalem. Amen. Come on. When he would look down from the top of the cross, he would say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. A prayer that shook the very foundation yes, of the devil's hell. Amen. Fire. Hallelujah. As we enter into this week, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowing that the work was finished on the cross. Come on. And the resurrection was the exclamation point. Amen. At Amen. the end of the sentence. My, my, my. There was no wrestling going on between the cross and the resurrection. I mean, after, between the time that He left the cross and to the grave. Amen. Oh, the work was finished. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. So thankful today for the resurrection. Amen. Yes. For the power of the resurrection. Because the Bible says that same Spirit that Raise Jesus from the dead will quicken our mortal bodies. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. One of these days, Come on. those that have died in Christ right. are going to kick off the dirt and come up out of the grave. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Those of us which are alive and remain, Amen. remain where? In Christ. Amen. Right. We will be called up right. to meet the Lord in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's coming a great day. Yeah. Amen. Resurrection day. Hallelujah. I still believe in the resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not the only one ever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Last week we talked about the river that Ezekiel spoke of in the 47th chapter of the great book of Ezekiel. All, right. All the prophets of old, the Lord showed them some visions and some things that were just so powerful. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And Ezekiel's river that he saw, Ezekiel the 47th chapter, and I'm not going to recap a whole lot, but I want to share with you one or two things that we talked about last week before we go on to finish this up. Ezekiel saw in his vision a river coming from under the threshold down by way of the altar and out of the temple, and the Bible goes ahead to talk about it going out into the desert, down into the sea. Amen. Right. A river that would proceed out of the temple of God Right. That would go forth to the other ends of the earth. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. And we learned how that this river represents or was a picture of, of course you can glean a lot of things from this, but nothing more powerful than the fact that this river represents Jesus Christ, the life giver. Amen. Right. That would come from the Father. Oh, Amen. Great. That would come by way of the altar. Hallelujah. Yeah. The old rugged cross, my, my, I still believe in the old rugged cross today, amen. amen. Hallelujah, if I was in a church that didn't preach the cross, I'd get out, amen. Right. If I was in a church that wouldn't have a cross in their sanctuary because they were afraid they would offend somebody, I'd get out, amen. Right. Hallelujah, because the preaching of the cross is the power of God, amen. Hallelujah, it is the power of God for those, for those of us which are saved, it is the power of God, amen. Right. Without the cross, there can be no life. Without the cross, there can be no everlasting life. There can be no abundant life that Jesus spoke of without the cross. Amen. And this river would leave the throne of God. God in the flesh. Amen. Would become man and he would walk this earth for 33 and a half years. And just as this river in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel said, Whithersoever this river goes, there will be life. Amen. Just as that river that Ezekiel saw, wherever Jesus went, there was life. Amen. When he went to the tomb of Lazarus, there was life. When he went to the centurion's daughter, there was life. When he stopped the funeral procession, there was life. Amen. Right. And those are just the things that we know of. Yeah. John said that, if, that, that all the books of the world could not contain the works of Jesus. Amen. Oh, so all the miracles that He did, all of the sayings that He did, we only have part of that. But one day we will know, amen, in full, all of the things that He did. Amen. Thank but there is God. not enough volumes, there's not enough books, there's not enough space on the earth to contain all of the things that Jesus did. Oh, tell it. Not enough books amen. to hold it all. Amen. He was God in the flesh. Yes, sir. Emmanuel. Yes, 
Right. Say, I don't believe it. Doesn't change it. He still was God in the Come flesh. On. Emmanuel. Amen. On, All part. The Bible says that the fullness of the Godhead rests in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus. All power given to Him up under heaven. Amen. No other name today whereby man can be saved. That hasn't changed. Right. There's still only one place to find life today, and that is this river that we're talking about. Amen. There's only one place to find eternal security today, and that is through Jesus Christ. Amen. There's only one way today to find peace. And that is through this river that we're talking about. Yes, sir. And we learned through the great prophet Ezekiel that this river went forth and the man with the line in his hand led the prophet out and it was ankle deep. Yes. And it got a little bit deeper. Come on. Amen. Amen. It was knee deep. All right. And it got a little bit deeper. Amen. Oh, Maybe all you want today is ankle deep salvation. No. Yeah. no. Amen. No. No. Some people, not Sister Cindy, she no. said, no, 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 no. Amen. <laughs> but some people, that's all they want. No. That's right. They don't want no more than just two. Everybody, if you've been to a creek before, maybe you went down to a river, maybe you said the ocean, and you just wanted to wade right along the shore there. Just enough to get your toes wet. That's the way some people are with their experience with the Lord. They just want that ankle deep. Amen? And to some people, they like to roll up their britches legs, get out there till it's knee deep. Right. Exactly. But there are those of us, Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Who aren't satisfied with ankle deep water. Amen. Amen. Who aren't satisfied, Brother Dave, with just knee deep water. Oh, Who aren't satisfied with just wading out to the waist. But we want to get out into that water that Ezekiel saw that couldn't be passed over. It was deep enough to swim in. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I ain't satisfied with what I got. I want more of it. Hallelujah. Say, Brother Billy, how much more of the Lord do you want? I just want a little more. And when I get that, how much do I want? I just want a little more. After you get that, how much do you want? I just want a little more. Amen. Oh. Ain't you got enough? Oh, no, I will never have enough. Amen. Never enough. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Water to swim in. Come on, Brother Billy. <laughs> he would see this river. And the Bible says that the man with the line in his hand would bring Ezekiel back to the bank of the river. Yeah. They call it the brink. Oh. And he would see something there that he didn't see before. Come on, tell him. He would see trees mm -hmm. on both sides. Oh, Amen. Come on. Where there was no life, now there was life. Right. Amen. Oh, we're talking about more than the natural river today. Amen. Amen. We're talking about Jesus, Amen. the river. Amen. Where there was no life, now there is life. Amen. Oh, who can speak to a cripple and he'll just stand right up and walk? Who can speak to the deaf and the dumb and they hear and start to talk? We're talking about that life given river this morning. Where there was no life, now there is life. Who can come into the life of an old drunkard, dead spiritually, hooked to the bottle, living in the ghetto or the alley or the gutter somewhere? Who can come into that life and raise him up and the chains fall to the side and he no longer wants the alcohol? He no longer has to be bound. We're talking about Jesus today. Buddha can't do that. Mohammed can't do that. But Jesus can do that this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whithersoever this river goes, yes. there is life. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. You want to know why today the devil had no power to keep him in the tomb? Right. Because he was life. Right. He was life. Amen. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Come on, preach. He said, I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it back up. There was not a devil in hell today that could have kept him from coming forth from the tomb. Because he was life. Oh, but he had to go get the keys. He had the keys, dummy. Or he couldn't have stood in front of Lazarus' tomb and said, Lazarus, come. He didn't ask the devil's permission to let Lazarus up out of death. He didn't ask nobody's permission to call him forth. He stood there and said, roll the stone away. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And there was no struggle. There was no devil to stop it. The devil said, "I right, get out of the way, boys. We can't stop this power he has. Come on, preach. 
And Lazarus came forth. Yeah. Amen. Can't stop it. Lazarus came forth. There ain't no stopping it. Come on. Amen. Come on. Jesus said, I'll lay it down. I'll pick it up. Yeah. And ain't no power that could stop it. Come on. Because he was life. Right. He is life. Right. This river that Ezekiel saw was life giving water. Mm -hmm. Where there was no life, now there was life. Come on. Where there was a desert, now trees begin to grow. Where <laughs> land was barren. See, I can testify to this today because this has happened to me. All right. Amen? Come on. Where there was no life. That's right. But there's at least now there's life. All right. Where that which was barren mm -hmm. and there was no hope. Mm -hmm. Now is fruitful and there is hope. Right. Amen. Come on. This river that Ezekiel spoke of that came from the temple. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, preach. Which was no more than a picture and a type. Every piece of furniture in there was a picture of Jesus. Oh, Even the layout. Yes. Amen. Come on. Some people God. have said, well, you got the wrong cross because they crucified some people just on a pole mm -hmm. that didn't have, have them stretched out like that. Yeah. Some of them like a, a Y-shaped deal. Mm. Amen. Come on. Oh, I think the Bible's pretty plain about what kind of cross he was crucified on. Amen? Yes, sir. Just look at the format. Just look at the way the tabernacle was laid out. Right. Right. Amen. Sometimes we think our way into trouble. Mm -hmm. Amen? We try to explain away stuff. We try to figure things out with our own carnal mind. Amen. That God's made simple. Amen? Amen. Amen? That God has made simple. That's right. A lot of people have thought their way right out of heaven and into hell. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because they won't try to explain God. Well, get a grip on yourself, scientist. You ain't going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. You can't explain God. That's right. Amen. So this river comes down out of the temple by way of the altar and goes forth into the desert, through the wilderness, into the sea. Come on. And we saw how that this is a picture of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you can't see that, I don't know, I don't know how to help you. Hallelujah. And we saw how that Jesus would talk to the woman at the well, and that's where I want to go back to. Yeah. This morning to John, the fourth chapter. Come on. We see Ezekiel's river coming from the temple. Come on. And we see how that's a picture of Jesus, how he was God in the flesh. Right. Came from his eternal abode. Come on. Amen. Come on. He came from the throne. Room in heaven. Yeah. To become mortal man. Right. He went to the cross. Come on. Thirty-three and a half years. He spoke life. Amen. Everywhere he went, everything he touched mm -hmm. would live. Yes. If they would allow it. Come on. Some people would stop it. Right. Some people would ask him to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> A lot of churches today have asked him to leave. Yeah, sir. there you go. You got it. Not welcome here. Amen. They told him as the, the prophet of old Amos, won't you will you go work somewhere else? Exactly. We're not against what you're doing, you just can't do it here. Exactly. So they've asked him to leave. Absolutely. Amen. They've they've expelled him not only from our classrooms, but from most churches across the United States. Yeah. Amen. On, they've asked they've said you're not welcome here. Right. Amen. Amen. You, you need to go somewhere else. Yes. Lord, Hallelujah. Bless Brother Billy. Oh, God. Help us, Lord. John, the fourth chapter, he would find a woman that would not tell him just go somewhere else. Jesus looking for people that are hungry for him. The Bible says, He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness will be filled. Amen. Shall be filled. Not maybe, not might be. Shall be filled. If you want to be filled today, Jesus will fill you up right. to overflowing. Amen. 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 We're talking about the river today. All right. We're talking about Jesus. God in the flesh. Amen. Amen. 100% man, 100% God. John, the fourth chapter, sixth verse. John 4 and 6. Somebody said something the other day, and I'll move on in a minute. I'm wound up this morning. I ain't supposed to be. 
I told somebody like God, if I had an assistant pastor, I wouldn't preach today. I'd let him do it. <laughs> Tyler said, I'll be your assistant. I said, well, you want to preach? He said, no. I said, forget it. That's what I need an assistant for. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, someone said that after he rose from the dead, they had a caption there on the empty tomb and it said, after this he would no longer be just a prophet. Listen to me. He was not just a prophet before. Amen. Right. He was more than a man right. when he walked along the sandy shores of Galilee. Amen. He was more than a man. Amen. Exactly. He was a man, yes, but he was God in the flesh. Yes. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Amen. When the disciple would cut off the soldier's ear, guess what this man would do? He'd reach down, pick it up, put it back on. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. He was more than a man. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. So this more than a man comes to Jacob's well in John the fourth chapter and the sixth verse. Come on. Let's go back and look at that look at that this morning. Say, so, well, I've done seen it all. Well then hush and let us look at it. Amen. Uh, Amen. have patience with us ignorant people. We might learn That's something right. new. Amen. 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 Exactly. Now Jacob's well was there. Yeah. Jesus. Somebody say the river. The river. Amen. <laughs> Therefore, being weary from his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy me. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me? Which have a woman of Samaria. Come on, brother. For the Jews have no dealings yeah. with the Samaritans. Yeah. It's time we dealt with some Samaritans today. Amen. 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 True. We come into our little cathedral, as it were. We shut the door behind us. Right. We offer up our sacrifice of praise, and that's what we feel like it is. Uh -huh. A sacrifice to right. praise. Right. I can preach this morning. Amen. Yes. We feel like it's a sacrifice. Yes. I guess I'm going to push myself on and get ready and go on to church. And I guess I'll just sacrifice today. And God will honor that. He will honor it. All right. But it's not nearly the sacrifice you let on for it to be. Amen. Amen. A sacrifice is after you've took 39 stripes on your back, Ooh, taking yeah. the heavy wood on your back and tearing it up. Yeah, God was healed. Amen. That's a sacrifice. Get ready for church. Ain't a sacrifice. Yeah. Lift it up in your hands and pray. That ain't a sacrifice. Oh, Amen. Yes. Yes. If that's a sacrifice for your flesh, I got news for you. You have pampered your flesh too long. Oh, you have it too spoiled this morning. Oh, if it's a sacrifice for you to go to God's house and lift up your hands and magnify His name, you are too spoiled today. Come on. Amen. Come on. It's just too hard on me that your flesh is too spoiled. Come on. Time to spank your flesh. Amen. Amen. Time to speak to your flesh and say, flesh. You're going to go to the house of God and you're going to lift up your hands and you're going to like it or not. It don't matter. Oh, come on. You're going to go do it. Exactly. If it's a sacrifice for you to praise this morning, something ain't right. right. Come on. Amen. 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 It's time we dealt with some Samaritans. That's what I was talking about. Come on. We come in. We lift up our hands. We worship the Lord. Yeah. While the world outside goes to hell. Amen. We go back outside after we've done our religious duty. Come on. Y'all know what I think about that statement? That's what it is. Religious duty. We go outside the doors. Say, preacher, you're too plain. I want you to understand what I'm talking about. Right. I don't want to be so, uh, so puffed up and high-minded. You walk out of here thinking, I wonder what he meant. What kind of secret meaning is that? Come on. Your religious duty stinks. That's what I'm talking about. All Amen. Right. If that's the reason that you're doing it, on, to appease your conscience, to make you feel a little bit more righteous than you did before you got up this morning. Amen. So we come in and we do our religious thing and we go outside the doors and we don't share it with nobody. We go along about our business. We let our neighbors go to hell. We let the people that our work go to hell. We don't share Jesus with anybody. Amen. It's time we dealt with some Samaritans. Amen. Yes. Yes. And your friends say, wait a minute. Come on. You know that you ain't supposed to have no dealings with them people. Shut up. Mm -hmm. We got the answer and they need it. Yes, Amen. Amen. Share Jesus. Right. 
Share Jesus. Right. Tell somebody about this life-giving water that we're talking about this morning. Right. Somebody that's lost and undone, right. bound by alcohol right. and drugs, on their way to a devil's hell. Tell them about Jesus. Yeah. He can set them free. Amen. So he's going to deal with the Samaritan. Shame on him. Amen. Come on. And his disciples, they would come back later, and I don't know if I'll get this far, so I'll throw this in here. And the Bible says they marveled yeah. at what he was doing talking to this woman. Because she needed help. That's right. Amen. Because she needed the answer. Amen. And he was the answer. Yes. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto her, I'm in verse 10. <coughs> If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and, we did, and he would have given thee living water. Do you remember what Ezekiel said? Yes. And everything shall live, yes. whether the river cometh. Hallelujah. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. I about come up out of my chair when I read that. Praise God. She don't know what deep water is. Amen. She's talking to that river of life that Ezekiel spoke of. And Ezekiel said that they were waters that were so deep and so wide that they couldn't be crossed over. She said the well is deep. Yeah, Jesus was a lot deeper than that well was. Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness. From which then hast thou that living water. Mm -hmm. He was that living water. Amen. All right. He was the living water. True. The river that would come down from the throne and through the altar right. and throughout the ends of the earth Amen. and offer the only hope for mankind. Then she asked, exactly. him this, she asked him this question. I love it. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Mm. Oh, was he ever... <laughs> He told one group, he said, before Abraham was, mm. I was. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Before Abraham was, uh -huh. I was. Yeah. He said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> they just scratched their head and walked off and thought he's crazy. Yeah. We, know when he, we know how old he is. Right. We know where he was born. Surely no good thing can come out of Nazareth. That's the kind of attitude they had toward Jesus. Yeah. That's why he had to go and do some, a lot of his works other places. Amen? Because right. a prophet's without honor in his own country. They said, well, he's just Joseph's boy. Amen? Yeah. He's up from Nazareth. Can't no good thing come out of Nazareth. That's why a lot of people despise this little church. Amen? Yeah. Can anything come good? Can any good come from a hole in the wall? Yeah. Oh! Hallelujah! I tell you what, if we get out of the way and let Jesus flow like he wants to flow, a lot of good can come from it. Amen? Get out of the way and let God move. Amen. Are you greater than our Father David? Hey, Brother Billy, you're going to have to comp get your composure. Yeah, I know it. Little as much when God. Oh, you ain't kidding, brother. <laughs> Labor not for wealth and fame. All right. Uh, where am I at? The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw. In verse 11. Nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou this living water? Goes on to say, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well, and drank thereof himself, and his, and his children, and, and his cattle? Oh, was he ever greater. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water yeah. shall thirst again. Now, don't, don't lose me. This is where we're going this morning. Oh Ain't going to hold you much longer. We're talking about that river that flowed in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel saw it coming from uh, out, forth out of the temple. Jesus comes forth as that river, amen, and dies on the cross and then leaves us the commission to take the gospel, amen. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, amen. You're talking about a thirst quencher, amen. amen. The, the Gatorade ain't got nothing on Jesus, amen. He will quench your thirst, hallelujah. Yes. But the water that I shall give him, see, he's telling her, He's talking to this woman more than just a natural thirst. Right. And we'll find that out when they go discussing how many times she'd been married and the husband she with now, the man she with now, didn't belong to her because see, she'd been trying to fill that void with everything else. Yeah. That's what you say, yeah, I know. And what the world does, yeah, that's what the church does too. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, sir. Amen. Tries to fill that empty spot that only belongs to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Try to fit everything else yeah. in there to fill up that spot that only belongs to Him. Amen. Yeah, They're thirsty. They're looking for something. Yeah. That's why they always got to have something new. Right. You get a hold of Jesus, you don't have to have something new. Yeah. You don't have to have the next best thing. He is the best thing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on. God. He said, if you drink of this water that you came to get here in this bucket, you're going to thirst again. But the water that I shall give him. Now listen. It won't just quench your thirst. But listen to me. Listen to me. He would tell her that you will never thirst, you will never thirst again if you drink of this water. But he didn't stop there, Brother Sleaze. He said, if you'll take of this water that I shall give him. But the water that I shall give him. Shall be in him yeah. a well of water yeah. springing up. Yeah. Spring it up. Yes. Spring it up. Yeah. Spring it up. Come on. Somebody say spring it up. Spring it up. It shall be in him a well of water springing up yeah. into everlasting life. This woman who had been spiritually dead came to life, but not only that, oh. it didn't just quench her thirst, but now this well, this river that she takes a drink out of, this river that flowed from the temple in the book of Ezekiel, this river that came down from God out of the throne room, this river that was sitting on the well, when she takes a drink of this river, yeah. oh. now the river flows through her. Right. Amen. 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 Thank God. Oh my goodness. I jump a beautiful one so fast. I said, now this river that Ezekiel saw come forth from the temple. Now this river that came forth as God in the flesh. Once she took a drink of him, now this river becomes a well in her spring it up. Spring it up. Spring it up into everlasting life. John the seventh chapter. Hold on to you bloomers. John the seventh chapter, the 37th verse, says in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me. What was he telling that woman? If you're thirsty, come unto me. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, don't miss it, don't miss it. Stop, stop for me, listen to me. The scripture, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Won't you take a drink of the river? Won't you take a drink of the life given water? This river that flowed through Ezekiel's vision, that flowed from the throne room of Almighty God, yes. now flows. From you. Come on, brother. Exactly. Now flows through you. Absolutely. Thank God. Now flows through you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What happens to the woman at the well? She takes a drink, mm -hmm. drops her water bucket, right. runs back into town. You see, it won't just quench your thirst. Yeah. But then the river will flow through you. What's she do? She runs back into town. Uh -huh. And the river begins to flow through her to All other people. Right. She says, come see a man. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Amen. I wish we'd do that more often than we do. Amen. <laughs> we run across people like this woman at the well all the time. Yeah. Hungry, thirsty for spiritual things. Come on. Amen. When's the last time we said, oh, come see a man? Right. Listen to me. Let me tell you about a man. Yes. Oh, my, my, my. She runs into town. She doesn't got a drink of this. Come on. She can't shut it up now, see? It's bringing it up. Right. It's bringing it up. It's bringing it up. The river's going to flow. All right. It's bubbling up. It's bubbling up. It's bubbling in my soul. Amen. I've seen you. What's wrong with you, Pastor? It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let the hallelujahs roll. Amen. 
She runs into town. She goes, hey, come see a man that told me all my stuff. He knows my business. You heard about the Messiah? I just met him. Yeah. She told Jesus. She said, I know Messiah will come. He said, the one that's speaking to you is him. Oh, I am hey, the Messiah. Hey, Amen. Hey, I am him. Hey, I am yeah. that I am. Amen. Yeah. Praise oh, my goodness. Wow. Now this water flows through her. Once you have partook of this river that we're talking about, mm -hmm. Christ in you, mm -hmm. the, hope the hope of glory. glory. And not just for you, but for others. Yes, sir. For others. You see, this river is not meant to be dammed up. Yeah. We do so many times close the mouth of the river. Yes, Amen. Sir. So many times we dam up the river of living water that's supposed to flow through us. Right. Maybe with things such as pride or with things such as, well, excuses or maybe even worldly things right. that we allow to get in the way to keep this river from flowing forward. Come maybe we're... Now. Maybe we're just too bashful, whatever the case right. is. But this river, she takes a drink. Uh -huh. She ain't worried about her water bucket no more. She drops it. She leaves her water pot. She runs into town. Come on. And she tells these people, come on, come on. And if you'll read it, you'll find that the Bible says there are those that believe because of the saying of the woman. Yeah. Now, she goes and that river flows through her. Right. And these people take a drink of the river that's flowing through her. Right. And those people now have the river flowing through them. Right. And they'll go tell somebody and that river will flow through them. Yeah. And they'll go tell somebody that will partake of this water and that river will flow through them. Yes. Amen. This life-giving water. Listen to this. The woman left her water pot. That's verse 28. She goes to the Bible, says she went her way into the city. And she begins to tell them. The Bible says in verse 39 that many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, He told me all that I ever did. <laughs> ever I did. Oh, I love the King James. Amen. He told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, coming to who? Jesus. Why did they come to Jesus? Because the woman ran into the city and shared what she had just got. Right. These people were as bad off as she was. Now they might not have thought so. Yeah. When they saw her out, they probably thought, there's that old adulterous woman. Mm -hmm. You know, look down their snooty religious nose. Mm -hmm. There's that old adulterous woman. Thank God we're not like her, honey. But these people were as thirsty as she was. Right. They were as dead as she was. Yeah. They were as in need of this life-giving water as she was. Yeah. I got news for you. You may sit in your mansion on the hill. Yeah. And you may look down at the drunk in the ghetto. Right. But if you don't know Jesus, you're as bad off as he is. If he don't know Jesus, amen. amen. Hey, well, we ain't bad off as she is. Oh, yeah, they were. Right. She ran and told them about Jesus. And the Bible says because she let that river flow through her, right. they went out. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Now, we see some of them believed because of the word, the testimony of this woman that had taken a drink of this living water that became in her a well springing up into everlasting life, that this river of life flowed through her. She went and shared with others, and some of them believed. Yeah. The one, then some of them came out and they believed on Jesus. Amen. Amen. And listen to what they say to her. And the ones that came out and believed there said to the woman, Now we believe. Not because of thy saying. I read a little something under that myself. Why they have to point out that we, we believe but it ain't because of you. So I think they still have some work to do, don't they? All right. Now we believe not because of thy saying. For we have heard him ourselves and know that this indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now, they might stand there and say, we believe now because we heard him, not because of what you told us. How they even know to get out there? Because of what she told them. <clears throat> All right. Amen. All right. Because of what? Why do we feel a need to be little people? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Why does our flesh 
feel a need to feel superior to other people. Amen. More spiritual, whatever the case may be. We believe now, but not because of what you said. Yeah, hypocrite, you wouldn't even have been there had it not been for what this woman ran into the city and told you to start with. Amen. So now this river flows through her. Yes. And everybody that would partake of this living water, that includes you. Right. This river will flow through you if you're allowed. Amen. Peter and John. Jesus has been crucified. He's already ascended to the Father. Right. Peter and John walks by, walks up to the temple, the hour of prayer. Mm -hmm. And there's a man sitting there and he's crippled, miserable, mm -hmm. dead. His legs are dead. No doubt he's probably spiritually dead too. Mm -hmm. And they look on, he looks upon Peter and John. And he's rattling his alms cup, his offering cup. Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. What's happening here? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? The river. Oh, how the river, Brother Dave, is flowing out of Peter and John. And this man's about to take a drink. And when he took a drink, his life, his, his legs came to life. And he jumps up on his feet and begins to praise God. Because now the river flows through Peter and John. What does it say about this river? Whithersoever the river went, there would be life. Right. That's the way it ought to be with you today, Christian. Amen. You shouldn't speak no death to nobody. The words that you speak should give them life. Yeah. Encouragement. That's why I believe gossip and backbiting is such a huge sin. Because the same water is not supposed to flow from the same fountain. Bitter Man, and sweet. sweet. Right. Amen. Come on. Yes. You're supposed to be God's mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. God's hand extended. I hope you think about that next time you get on the phone to run down your brother and sister. Sorry. Amen. Amen. This river of water flowing through you, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. What's the Bible say? The power of life and death is where? In the power of the tongue. It's in your tongue. That's right. The place where the river flows. Yes. What's the Bible say? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Can you get this? this can you, I hope you're taking notes or get the sermon. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the, the place where the river flows. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right. Let this river that you've partaken of and that is now a well springing up into everlasting life. Oh. This, this water, this living water that's supposed to flow from your belly. How does it flow from your belly? It don't come out your belly button. It comes out your mouth. Right. Amen. Amen. It comes out of your mouth. Ooh. It comes from down inside that river. Oh, my, my, my. Yeah. You ever seen somebody or heard somebody talking about they were digging a well. They tried to hit an underground river. Amen. Yeah. They tried to hit some underground water. They some water down in here that it's time we removed everything that's hindered it and let it flow forth out of our mouth so that we can speak life into people's lives instead of death. Amen. You now are that living water. Yeah. Not you. You're the vessel that it flows through. But you're important. Amen. Amen. Sure, he can use somebody else. But how many people today want him to use somebody else? I want him to use me. Amen. Amen. I'm happy that he uses other people, but I don't want to be left out in the cold and say, "Well, he uses everybody but me." I want to be a part of it. Amen. All right. I want to be. Amen. I want to be. Right. A vessel for the Lord to flow through. For this river to flow through. This life-giving river. Yes. That came down. We saw it in Ezekiel's temple. We see it in Jesus. Amen. And now it's in you. What are you going to do with it? You going to dam it up or are you going to let it flow? Oh, Lord, help us to be. Help us to speak life. Yes. Help us to get somebody else wet. Amen. Amen. Let it spring up. Right. Running over. Oh, my, my, my. That river now flows through you. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. When you partake of Jesus, my, 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 you become the vessel for that living water, that river of life to flow through to other people. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Great. You have the answer. Share it with somebody. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
someone else this morning have something.